the land. Every year it gets hotter than the last. We got politicians who still question the silence, the science of climate change. Even as we know that we've got a transition from fossil fuels, we continue to destroy conservation land, land that God made to secure our right for cheap oil. Even though Oklahoma had more than 800 earthquakes in one year as a result of fracking wastewater disposal, their governor refused to put the safety of the people above the profits of the energy companies. As the cost of our lifestyle becomes more and more evident, I wonder what will it take for us to recognize that an economy built on the profits of the few maintained by the labor of the many that is fueled by stealing the planetary inheritance of future generations is not an economy that is worth maintaining. You see, the problem is not climate change alone. It's our commitment to a system that does not value all of the life that God created. A system that allows us to topple the majestic mountains and depress human dignity in the name of progress. It's an unjust system in direct opposition of God's love. And I want to tell you, my sisters and brothers, the responsibility lies not only with our elected leaders, but within our communities as we must make decisions not just for freedom of the individual, but how it will benefit the whole. How much disruption has to happen before we consider the folly of our way of living? How many forest fires will it take before we stop cutting down virgin forests to build mansions. Uh, how many drought warnings will it take to realize that it's not natural to have golf courses in the desert? Uh, how many, how much pollution do we have to breathe in before we question whether we need so many mass-produced goods? Uh, and some of us, my God, uh, have read this story countless times, uh, or we even watched the movie with Charlton Heston, amen, somebody, the Ten Commandments, uh, uh, amen, and, and we've undoubtedly imagined ourselves always in the role of the Israelites. Some of us became church leaders or activists wanting to be like Moses uh, or Aaron uh, or Moses' mama or sister who saw the vision early on. But today I want to challenge us to realize the ways that we also, we oppress folk. Mm -hmm, it's quiet now. It's quiet out there in online land. How have we, the oppressed folk, been complicit with the pharaonic order? How have we been complicit in the ways that we have aligned our thinking and our habits with the great house? We call out those that are running to be in the great white house. But are we willing to recognize the ways that we've allowed our minds and our habits to align with oppressive systems? We denounce the government for going to war, but we happily fill our tanks with the oil that they go to war for. Go on and preach, Bishop. I think I will. We call for action on climate change. All right, I had to go old school, y'all, because the restream started messing up. We're going to have to play with it a little bit. Fossil fuel companies. We decry Let's unjust see. wages, but we continue to fill our I gotta get up on. with cheap I got to come back to you, Graham. Those who I need this for Periscope. We got to get our Louis Vuitton, our Michael Kors. Y'all ain't going to help me now. Our Gloria Vanderbilt. Uh-huh. We got to get our Dooney Burks and all of our designer stuff that's made in sweatshops. Amen. And we decry. Uh, the, the, the treatment of these laborers, uh, but our closets are filled with the products that they make. And that brings me to my final point. Because we can't speak against Pharaoh when we're part of the pharaonic order. Would you touch? No, don't touch nobody. <laughs> Would you look at somebody and tell them we can't speak against Pharaoh when we're part uh, of the pharaonic order. Uh, say it with me on YouTube. Say it with me on Facebook. Uh, we can't speak against the Pharaoh when we're part of the pharaonic order. Uh, but wait, Bishop. 
I ain't down with Trump, I mean Pharaoh. No, you might not agree with his divisive, racist politics. You may not agree with his abrasive, bigoted ways. But when we really think about it, we have to examine some of the ways we comply with, buy into, and participate in our own oppression and the oppression of others through the Pharaonic order. Yeah, we can't speak about Pharaoh without recognizing that as Americans, we are often lieutenants of the Pharaonic order, even when we don't mean to be. So when the call goes out to pray, to hear from God, and to turn from our wicked All words, right, so that God can we hear good our now. Land, that call is not just to somebody else. Had to but improvise, to but we live. It's to us as black folk. It's to us as the church, particularly the church in of uh, the urban centers across America, we need Three, to five, examine six. the way that we have linked God's house to the great house. How we have cozied up to political figures in ways that stop us from speaking truth to power. Uh -huh. Because we don't want to lose measly $15,000 grants. And we don't want to lose the opportunity to take a picture with the mayor or the governor. And so we won't say certain things uh, about the injustice that they participate in. Because we have slowly become a part of the Pharaonic order. Uh, how is our lifestyle in direct contradiction to God's love of every human being? We've got to consider the way that our division along the lines of race and class and many other fault lines has prevented us from being a prophetic voice. All right, we're ready now. We've got to challenge our theology of blessing that are really an excuse we ready for now, consuming in ways that are killing I was the ready. Come on, somebody. We always I was having some God technical difficulties, car, amen, that but they's all right now. Into the air. God bless me with this device. God Somebody put the number up on the screens. Amen. 413-736-2781. The very planet and the very, come on somebody, natural resources that he made for future generations. Yeah. We look at it as our birthright, even the goods that are produced by underpaid and overworked human beings uh, that are supposed to be our brothers and sisters. And so we've got to look at how uh, 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 we that are overeating and under exercising, God help me here now. I done messed up everybody in online land and the few of y'all that's in the church. Amen. How is it that we overeating and under-exercising in ways that cause us to have terrible health outcomes is helping our community? How are we helping the next generation when we're dying too soon of things that are preventable and we're not passing on wealth? to the next generation. We are becoming part of the Pharaonic order. The Pharaoh no longer has to kill us on purpose. We're killing ourselves. Oh, God, help me here. See, sisters and brothers, only... This program has been underwritten by Metrocom Income Tax Services. Hi, I'm Tom Morrow, President of Metrocom Tax Services, specializing in individual sole proprietorships, corporations, partnerships, estate tax planning, accounting, and bookkeeping. E files for faster returns. Metrocom Tax Service, where early filers get early returns. Located at 11 Preston Street, Springfield. 413. All right, let's get into this, y'all. 436 737 846. Let's make it do what it do. TCC would like to thank Metrocom Tax Services for underwriting with us. This program has been underwritten by Mass Hire Hamden County Workforce Board. Are you unemployed or trying to make ends meet on a minimum wage job? Are you seeking a career? Have you considered a manufacturing career as a CNC or a complex machine operator? Mass Hire Hamden County Workforce Board has training slots available for a free 15-week advanced manufacturing training program. Trainees will learn blueprint reading, shop math, how to use measurement tools, and basic machining operations and setup. Training programs are located in Chicopee, West Springfield, and West All right, Atlanta. we get ready to get into this conversation. Only working part-time or cannot be making Share, tap that screen, Periscope, get them equipment hearts equipment up. Required for this program. YouTube, I need you to subscribe, to thumbs up. Lyons, I need you to like and share Facebook. Email at jlyons at masshire. Wave at me, Instagram. WTC 
FCC would like to thank Mass Hire for underwriting with us. This program has been underwritten by LNG Signs and Designs. LNG Signs and Designs, creators of signs, awnings, channel letters, vehicle lettering, wraps, large format digital printing, banners, business cards, etc. Large format digital printing, business cards, and more. Anything in printing, anything in signs and designs. It's done right here. One Adams Street in Springfield, Massachusetts. 413-301-7965. That's 413-301-7965. Email us at lgsignsdesigns at gmail.com or find us online at lgsignsdesigns.com. WTCC would like to thank LNG Signs and Designs for underwriting with us. All right, let's get it, y'all. Let's get it. Four one three seven three six. Two seven eight one. Good morning. Welcome to the Spoken Word. Bishop Talbert Swan in the house. Had some technical difficulties, so we had to go back to the regular stuff. But we're on everywhere, all right? So we got you now. We got your Facebook. We got you uh, Instagram. We got you Twitter. We got you um, whoever else. Uh, YouTube. We got all of y'all up in here. Um so rep your city, rep your town. Let me know where you're coming in from. i um, like to know where my viewers are coming in from. Good morning to each and every one of y'all. 413-736-2781. Put that up on the screen, somebody. Let them know how to call into the program. So we're still struggling with coronavirus. And now they're saying that the quarantine period will go to the end of April. Huh. That covers um, Palm Sunday, Holy Week, Easter, my birthday. We'll be in quarantine for my birthday. All right. So uh, we're social distancing. We're doing what's necessary to stop the spread. And in the middle of all of that, the guy y'all voted for can't tell the truth. Okay? 46 minus 1 has turned his daily press conferences into substitutes for his rallies. So basically, you know, his rallies, he got to stand before his adoring fans, tell lies, get them to cheer him, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and now he gets to do it before all the American people, and he's checking the ratings. You know, how am I doing? Am I doing as well as The Bachelor, Monday Night Football? Any of that stuff. That's what's important to this clown. He's incapable, once again, of telling the truth. Not only is he incapable of telling the truth, um, he's heedless of science. It does not matter what scientists say. It doesn't matter what medical professionals um, have to say. It, it, it doesn't matter, um, you know, what the experts have to say, whatever he feels. You know, that's that's all that's important. So he's heedless of science. And this dude is a hostage to the demands of his insatiable ego. That's all that matters is his ego, that, that, that I've got to be doing a good job, no matter how terrible it is, no matter how inept I am, no matter how, 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 how the incompetence of my administration has led to America now having the most coronavirus cases in the world. I remember when this started out just a couple of weeks ago, he was at a rally boasting that there were only 15 cases in the United States because I'm doing such a great job. Now we have more cases than any other nation in the world in a two-week period because of the ineptitude of this administration and this clown y'all call the president. Um, 
I mean, just think about the litany of bogus assurances, of hunches he had, of misinformation that he get, of magical thinking. You know, just drive-by political shootings, self-stroking. This is who we got in the White House, y'all. Good morning, caller. Yes. Uh, Brother Swan, you know I've been listening to this thing on the radio. And this whole thing sounds like a hope. It sounds like an opportunity to implement. And now, first, 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 wait, 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 wait. First, let's 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 make it clear, okay? So don't don't use that language. I'm not gonna let you pass misinformation here. Don't say it's a hoax. Now, how? Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish. Let me finish. However, you think the origin of it came up. You know, I may not agree that it came from bats or or, or whether it was biological warfare or how it was produced, but it's not a hoax because people are getting it and people, real people, are dying. So we can't call that a hoax. Caller? All right. 413-736-271. I don't want that language on this radio program. You know, there's enough misinformation that's being spread um, from the highest office in the land. Um, you know, what, what he said was, um, these are his quotes. We have it under control. It's going to be just fine. He said by April, when it gets a little warmer, it will miraculously go away. This is what the dude is saying in his daily press conferences. Regardless of what the scientists are saying, regardless of what the medical professionals are saying, this is what y'all's president is saying to the American people, okay? Th that he just has to reassure them, even if it's complete bull manure. You know, he, he's just going to say it. You know, whatever he thinks is going to make him sound good or look good, that, that, that'll fit right there. It doesn't matter. Truth, the hell with truth. Just whatever fits. Um, he said that the Obama administration had made a decision on testing that turned out to be detrimental to what he was doing. It had nothing to do with what he was doing. Nothing to do with it. He said that 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 the numbers are going down, not up. Lies. In two weeks, we surpassed every country in the world. Good morning, caller. Hello. You're on the air. Hi, I'm calling because I am furious with what's happening. The president needs to be censored. He needs to be removed from the daily press briefings. And we need to be reminded that last week, 12,000 steps were frowned upon, and this week, 100,000 are acceptable. I admire what you're doing. I follow you on Twitter, and I support everything that you stand for. Thank you. I appreciate your call. 413-736-2781. This guy said, we have it so well under control. We've done a very good job. As of right now, Anybody that needs a test can get a test. We had a young man right here in the city I live in, 20 years old, went to the hospital. They said he's displaying all of the uh, symptoms of coronavirus, but he can't get a test, and they sent him home. But anybody who needs a test can get a test. That's still a lie. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yes, uh, that's the phone. Uh, I will have to mention the helicopter family. Has she raised the idea or uh, uh, speculation to find out whether uh, this thing could uh, spread it uh, nutritional or what? I'm not even sure what you're asking. Good morning, caller. You're on WTCC. Good morning, um, Mr. Swan. Uh, you're doing a more excellent, most excellent job. I just ask you a question, and maybe you can guide me through this process. So, I believe in my God, 
and I believe you believe in a God, and my God tells me that he will heal me and keep me well from all things that is created of man. Now, I don't want, I, my God, I know is not going to kill me, and I know he's never deliberately killed anybody, so why am I now afraid of someone else's God when my God already promised me deliverance? Well, here, here's here, here's my take on that, and um, and and just listen to, to 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 my position. My position as a man of faith, um, as a Christian preacher, um, um, I believe in God. I believe in the power of God. I also believe, as the Bible teaches, that God reigns on the just and the unjust, and that life can still happen to any of us, regardless of our faith. Um, and, it, and there's a lot of faith shaming that's going on out there. That people are being told if they don't go to church, it's because they don't have enough faith, if they don't go out. Cause no, no, sickness is real. Everybody, if you believe in miracles and you believe that, that Christ um, raised Lazarus from the dead and he healed the blind man, Lazarus still eventually died. So did the blind man. Everybody he ever healed, everybody he ever touched, eventually succumbed to the vicissitudes of life and the fact that this body is made of clay and eventually it breaks down and eventually we all die. And the scripture that I read, the God that I serve also said, it is appointed unto men once to die. All of us got to go that route. I don't know how it's going to happen for me, you don't know how it's going to happen for you. It could be coronavirus. It could be something else. We don't know. So, so I think it, we get into a dangerous position if we ignore what medical professionals and scientists are telling us and ignore the severity of this pandemic based on faith that we can just go about willy-nilly and God going to take care of me. That's my position on it. Okay, Bishop, I would never willy-nilly ignoring highly educated people. Um, I did read, however, they said we should use practical safety device like washing our hands, staying safe, distant, and we do those things. We shouldn't. This is a very weak kind of virus. It shouldn't last more than a little bit. A matter of fact, the colder the water, the, the better it, it's going it, to, the, the chance of killing it. Uh, it, it now, now there, now there, now there are others. There are other professionals. There are, there are other professionals though that are saying up to a million Americans can catch this, and up to a hundred thousand people could die uh, because of it. So I, I, I don't want to trivialize it as something being weak. Anything that's killing folks. Well, I, I'm not trivializing. I would never do such a thing. But I'm trying to keep it in perspective to what's being said by some of the science community and some of them may have a little bit different we now have an opportunity to choose which is the best for us based on our physical strength and the people and the gods that we believe in in order to move us safely through and maybe maybe because our faith our health we can help guide some of the weaker people by helping them wash their hands by making sure they are keeping the right safety distance, just by seeing us modeling, then they will have a better chance of surviving this, this, this most dreaded um, scourge upon this earth. I'm just trying to make a suggestion that maybe we need to look all directions in order to move forward rather than just in one narrow spectrum of, the, of our options. Well, certainly. Well, sir. Well, certainly we lean on our faith, and certainly we definitely help those that are vulnerable, um, our seniors, those that have health issues, compromised immune system, uh, our youth. Um, we look out for all of them, and 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 you know we pray and we and we take the advice of the medical professionals, um, and look forward to the day when this is abated, um, um, and we can learn whatever lessons that come from it. Um, but until that time, uh, we're all in this together, uh, certainly. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yes. Hey, Pastor, you know it says in the Bible, 
a person with that knowledge will perish. This is a sign of that statement. Okay. Okay, so, 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 um, uh, my people perish for lack of, wait, 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 my people perish for lack of knowledge. What does that have to do with coronavirus? And this is, this is your third, this, wait, this is your third call. So this is the last one. So explain it good. Yes, you know the Bible. You, you, I know the Bible from the cover of that. If you know the Bible. I'm not convinced of that. I ain't, I ain't convinced of that, but go ahead. Okay, okay, well, you ask your question. Okay. If you know the Bible like I do, the Bible tells you. Mess like this, you don't worry about me because God tells you. Don't worry about it. Nah, bruh. No, no, no. Bye. That's your last call. No, 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 no. That's the most ignorant advice. You can give anybody. Just don't worry about it. The Bible say this. Don't worry about it. I'm a man of faith, but don't be ignorant and irresponsible with your faith. You don't tell folk because the Bible say this. Just don't worry about it. You know, that's the problem with a lot of religious people today. That's a problem with a lot of church folk. That's a problem with a lot of people who are in my denomination and in my religion. They have the don't worry about it, God going to take care of me attitude. So they overeat. They eat the wrong foods. They don't exercise. They don't take care of themselves. And then when their fat, out of shape self gets in trouble, when they got to go in for that surgery, then they come in the prayer line and want me to anoint them and pray away their health issue that they worked for 40 years to get and then want to blame that it's a lack of faith by the preacher or a lack of power by the preacher to, to, to heal them when you done spent 40 years talking about don't worry about it and eating yourself into a diabetic coma. Stop that foolishness. Cut it out. Stop over-spiritualizing things and acting like if you believe the Bible, you also believe that we have a responsibility. Jesus never performed any miracle without giving a responsibility to the person he performed the miracle for. They had to play a role in their miracle. It's throughout your Bible. Old Testament and New Testament. Naaman, you want to be cured of your leprosy, go wash seven times. Okay? Everybody was given an instruction on what to do to help themselves. And we want to do things that kill ourselves and then leave it up to God and faith and the preacher to heal us. That's not how this thing works. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Pastor. And Amen to everything you said, <laughs> Mother McCoy. Amen. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we got a role to play in this. You know, we don't want to exercise. We don't want to eat right. We don't want to take care of our mental health. And then we want to blame it on the book. What the Bible says, so I just ain't going to worry. You keep on not worrying into a grave. 413-736-2781. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah. No, your time is up, man. We not This ain't the me and you show today. Your time is up. You done called four times. That's it. We get no more ignorance. Good morning, caller. Yes, uh, I'd just like to say, uh, first and foremost, thank you so much for continuing your uh, message of information and hope. Uh, I, I really enjoy listening to you. Uh, secondly, I, I have a question. All right. Do you think, based off of your experience and your you know, opinion, had President Trump been removed from office during his impeachment trial, do you believe the country would be in the state that it's in with respect to the coronavirus? That's hard to say because what's hard to say is whether or not a Mike Pence um, 
would have done any better. Um, Mike Pence is, is, is obtuse in terms of his religious perspective. The attorney general currently, not the attorney general, the surgeon general, is a Pence appointee from Indiana. And he's had some real ignorant things to say um, um, during this, this case. And if the administration has not significantly changed, I'm not certain that the response to this pandemic um, would be much different in terms of the overall results. Perhaps we wouldn't have the clown show that we have every day in these briefings and the type of over-the-top buffoonery that we get from Donald Trump. But I'm not sure um, with the same administration in place minus Trump um, and Pence has basically been a sycophant to Trump for the last three plus years, I'm not sure we'd be in a, in a, in a better position than we are right now. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for your call. 413-736-2781. Uh, Trump said um, 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 so much that just defies the imagination um, through all of these things. And, and so l let me get to this point because I'm, I'm running out of time um, in terms of the the uh, the ratings. Now, the New York Times uh, wrote an article, and and see, you've got to context means everything. Now, the the purpose of the Times article, in terms of talking about the ratings that the daily coronavirus press briefings have gotten was to underscore how dangerous they are because of all of the misinformation that Trump is putting out there during them. Okay? Understand that. That was the context of the story. The story was not written to stroke Trump's ego. It was not written to say, hey, Trump, you're so great. Look at your ratings. You got better ratings than The Bachelor. You got better ratings than uh, Monday Night Football. What they were saying was there are so many people watching these daily briefings that the misinformation that is happening at those briefings can cause American lives. Trump took it completely out of context. And he continued to display an unnervingly tone-deaf perspective on this coronavirus threat by bragging about his TV ratings. And that's what you get when you elect a talk show host as president. When you elect somebody who was the reality TV star of The Apprentice, he boasted about the ratings. I got better ratings than the finale of The Bachelor. I got better ratings than Monday Night Football. That drives the lamestream media crazy. This is what this clown took that article to mean. That, I mean, he missed the point. He missed the point. They were exploring the increasing debate among the networks about whether or not to cover his briefings because they're peppered with falsehoods, with misleading information, okay? With lies about COVID-19. And so people are dying in a nation with more than 140,000 confirmed cases with the death toll up around 2,500, this dude is bragging about his television ratings. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? <sighs> and so then his top um, health advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, 
the, the head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, warns us on Sunday that the death toll could hit 200,000. The death toll could hit 200,000. Now, now, the point, once again, was that 110 million Americans are watching this dude. And this guy is peppering them with all kinds of falsehoods and misinformation. And some people, because you got to remember once again, 63 million people voted for this clown which means there are some very dumb people in the world who actually think that this guy knows what he's talking about and could be telling the truth. And so they'll go about their daily lives listening to this guy. Ah, oh, just go to work. It's going to go away. It's going to dry up as soon as the weather gets warm. You got clowns out there who are believing this carnival barker. And so the New York Times was saying the fact that the ratings are so high puts Americans at risk because this guy is lying to them. Listen, I want to I want to encourage you all to stay safe. Observe all of the social distancing guidelines, um, everything that they're telling you. Listen, it, 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 we, we get we get one opportunity to deal with this pandemic um, and it could hit any one of our homes or our circles. Um, and so if it means, you know, we have to miss certain things and we have to adjust our lives in ways that are uncomfortable. You know, I was in church yesterday um, with a uh, skeleton staff of less than 10 uh, so that we could stream to our our uh, online audience and to our membership and still bring them our worship experience utilizing technology that's different for us that that's that that's not our level of comfort of not having our people in the sanctuary to interact with them but that's what we have to do in order to safeguard them um, and so if it means you can't visit your, your, your parents for a while or you can't go here or go there, um, do that. Don't be like the kids in Miami during spring break acting like this is no big deal. Uh, Rodney Brown in Florida, Pastor Rodney Brown had a packed church yesterday. They were live streaming, literally 1,000 people in the sanctuary because their faith is going to get them through, like my earlier caller. Just don't worry about it. That's that's ignorant. That's that's not faith. That's that 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 that's dogma. That's that's ignorance. God gives us wisdom. Um, and 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 stop faith shaming people. That if they just don't believe, it's gonna go away. It is just gonna be okay. No, faith gives us good sense. You know, um, I, I, I can have faith in God and I still listen to Dr. Scavron because he's my doctor. OK. <laughs> and I know some of y'all out there talking about Jesus is my doctor. He writes out all my scription. No, Jesus don't write your prescription. Your doctor, Dr. Scavron writes my prescription. And I take the pills that he tells me to take. Of course, in consultation and research and all of that, it's a partnership. My health is a partnership between me and, and my health providers. Um, but I don't use my faith as an alternative to good, healthy practices. And you ought not either. All right? I got to go. James Lewis is in the studio. He's coming up next with mid-morning jazz and great black music. Uh, as always, it has been my pleasure to be with you. Hopefully, we'll get that restream working right um, next week. We're going to play with it a little bit this week since we're in quarantine anyway. We can play around with it and, 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 and see if we can make it do what it do. Um, 
But I got to get out your way, family. And until the next time I talk to you and you talk to me, always remember God loves you and so do I. All right, fam, I got to go. Holla.